Good morning, I'm Chris Fox, and this is the first video in a new type of series I'm doing. I decided to branch out a little bit and tackle motivation, specifically motivation for writers, because this is a tough gig. It really is. I, I can't speak for you, but I've been at this since I was six years old. I've gone through spurts where I'd write for a few years and then realized that I sucked really badly at this craft and I'd quit. And some of those, those quitting slumps lasted over five years, one of them almost a decade. And it is my hope that by doing videos like this, I can help you avoid the same mistake. Because if I could go back to 18-year-old me and tell them one thing, it would be what you're about to learn in this video. Everybody starts at zero. Everybody. We're all born at zero and we have to grow from there. And the problem that we run into is that we compare ourselves to people who've been building for longer. So you look at someone who you consider to be an overnight success, like let's say Andy Weir wrote The Martian. This book has already sold millions of copies. It became a movie. It's widely acclaimed. He's basically a household name. And he's only written one book. And so you look at this and you're like, wow, how could I ever possibly accomplish that? And the methodology that I'm about to show you is how I prevent myself from comparing Chris Fox against Andy Ware or Stephen King or all these other people that are so much further along in their journey than I am. So I hope this is useful. If you find that it is, let me know. I can do more videos like this. So the magical lesson that I wish I could pass along to 18-year-old me is giving yourself permission to suck. And by that I mean everyone starts at zero. So about a, eh, three months ago I decided I was going to start becoming an artist. And I purchased you know, an iPad Pro and I got myself my neat little Apple Pencil and I started sketching. And guys, I'm terrible at this. I have no artistic ability. I have no practice, no training. So I'm starting from nothing. And in that three months, I've mastered the basics. I've gotten a little bit better. I'm years away from being anybody decent in, in the art community and maybe decades away from being anything approaching a master, but I'm doing the work. And the important part of what makes this both fun and achievable for me is accepting the truth of where I am right now. I'm not saying to myself, I'm going to paint the Sistine Chapel in 2017. I'm saying I'm just beginning this journey called art and it's okay that I'm not very far along. And you should approach that regardless of what endeavor you're doing. The way that I, I look at it, the analogy that helps me the most, is think of your craft like a, a school journey. So here in the United States, we begin in kindergarten, move on to first grade, and you go all the way up through 12th grade, after which you graduate and you go to university or college. Well, if you look at this journey like school, it becomes much, much easier to accept limitations. So for example, in art, I'm, I'm in first grade. I just graduated from kindergarten. Yay, I've made some progress. But I'm only in first grade. I'm not trying to do amazing things. And I'm accepting that anything that I work on right now, it's going to be amateurish because I am an amateur. That's where I am. And I don't need to be further along than I am just yet. There is no sin in admitting that you are a beginner. The sin lies in knowing that you're a beginner and expecting yourself to immediately become a master. So you're going to jump from first grade, where I'm at right now, to 12th grade. It doesn't happen that way. I've got to get to second grade and third grade and fourth grade. And from the perspective of writing, when you look at someone like me, and you see that in 21 days I wrote and edited an entire novel, and that that novel is now selling hundreds of copies a day on Amazon, you know, results not typical, guys. <laughs> I put in a lot of effort that you're not seeing. I was toiling over the keyboard decades ago. I've put in thousands upon thousands of hours at this craft, and that's why I've reached where I am today. And I'm not saying that where I'm at is unachievable. Some of you have already surpassed me. What I am saying is that if you're the person watching this video who is in third grade right now, if your writing is not yet where you want it to be, if you can't get your friends and family to read it, if people are disappointed when they take a look at your stuff, it's okay, as long as you don't give up. In my case, I gave up twice. And in both cases, it was longer than five years where I got so discouraged and I, I said to myself, there's no way that I can do this long term. There's no way that I can become an amazing author that I couldn't face it anymore. I just stopped. 
And then I had this kind of seminal moment where in 2009, Brandon Sanderson was doing a book tour for The Wheel of Time. Uh, for those that don't follow the, the epic fantasy world, um, The Wheel of Time is one of the most beloved sagas of all time. It started way back in the early 90s, and I picked up the first book when it came out. I was in high school. And every couple of years, for the first few years, a new book would come out. And these things were gigantic, and I loved them. And then this series ran counterpoint for my entire life. And it had ups and downs. Not every book is amazing. Robert Jordan, the original author, um, he, he was kind of hit and miss towards the end. And eventually, Robert passed away, which was you know, devastating to his fans. And we despaired about ever getting an ending. And then all of a sudden, out of right field, this author no one has heard of, Brandon Sanderson, was picked to finish The Wheel of Time. And that got my attention because I wanted to see an end to the series I'd been following for decades. I wanted to know what happened to all these characters. And so I started watching Brandon's success. And I, I checked out a little bit of his fiction, and he seemed pretty good. And when the time came for the book to be released, it was called The Gathering Storm, he did a book tour. And this book tour passed not too far from my house. So I found out that they were looking for volunteers to work the signing. You'd get this neat Storm Leader t-shirt. And I signed up. And I got picked. So I ended up working this book tour. And my job at this book tour was to sit about two feet from Brandon. And if you wanted your book signed, you walk up and you handed your book to me. I wrote a sticky note with what should be signed on that, and I handed it to Brandon. So for three hours, I got to shadow Brandon Sanderson at a book signing. I watched his behavior and his mannerisms, and I realized, wait a minute, this guy's just another geek like me. I mean, I could hang out with this guy at one of my D&D sessions. He would totally fit in. And, and that was powerful, because now I see this guy who's not so different from me that is doing this writing thing and doing it successfully, and it was in that moment that I started questioning a lot of things. I started asking myself, what would have happened if I hadn't given up at writing? What if I jumped in right now and started again? And so here I am, six years later, I've got 10 books in print and I'm spitting out a book a month. I've achieved my dream. I have thousands upon thousands of readers. I'm making a living doing this. And the only difference between me failing and me succeeding was me giving up. The only time at which I consider myself to have been a, a loser is when I, I quit, when I quit entirely, when I said, I can't do this anymore, and I stopped writing. When I got back on the horse, I realized, you know, using my school analogy, maybe I'm in seventh or eighth grade. And for the first time in my history as a writer, it became okay to suck. I gave myself permission to suck. And I said, I have to get through ninth, tenth, and eleventh grade before I can finally be a senior, before I can finally be in 12th grade and then graduate. And I wrote the, the words that led me there. I, I spit out two million terrible words over the next few years. And by the end of that, I had gotten to 12th grade. I was at a point where I could write a compelling story that people would want to read and they'd pay me money for. And here I am today. If you were early in the journey, I don't care where you are in that journey and you're not happy with your writing, don't give up. Keep writing. Find success stories. Find people who are doing what you want to do, who have the success that you want to have, and reach out to them. You'll, you'll be surprised. Most of us are pretty human and will answer you. I've made friends with people that I never in a million years thought would take time to tell me, you know, share maybe a little bit of their journey and, and help mentor me a bit. And they've been great about that. That's part of why I am where I am today. So the takeaway from this first motivational video is give yourself permission to suck. All of us start at zero. Everyone starts at zero and we grow from there. You've got to put in a ton of time. You've got to put in a ton of work. But if you do so, you're going to achieve that goal that you're after. You can be a novelist selling thousands of copies, doing this writing thing for a living, if you stick with it.